Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, in your word is the same. Your word tells us that not one jot or tittle will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will stand forever. And now we're going to open up your word, Father. We need that same God. We need you, Lord. God, to open up the scriptures to us, oh God, in our hearts. God, help us to see, Lord God, and hear and understand what your Holy Spirit <coughs> is saying to us today. Father, we give you this time in the word. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We're relying on it, Lord. We're asking this all in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Let's give the Lord one more praise offering. Well, you know, I was uh, been under the weather this week, as you probably can hear from my voice, but <clears throat> I think it got complicated with the pollen and... Um, Excuse me, and the smoke from the Canadian fires. Did anybody else here get, I got burnt leaves all over where the, my house is. They're all the way from Canada. Yeah, there was just burnt leaves all over the place. So uh, I unwisely went out mowing on a day where it was not so cool. So I think uh, with the cold and with the pollen and with all the smoke, uh, it got to me. I hadn't been that sick in a long time. I actually lost my voice. But here I am by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about something that uh, we all need to uh, know about. You know, I was thinking about <clears throat> organizations that when you, when you join an organization, there are requirements. Uh, there are many times, depending on the organization, there are conduct codes that you need to follow if you want to stay a part of that organization. I was looking um, on the Marines uh, uh, website. <clears throat> no, I'm not joining the Marines, uh, although I know they'd love to have me. But uh, here is uh, their code of conduct. It says, never lie, <clears throat> never cheat or steal, abide by an uncompromising code of integrity, Respect human dignity and respect others. Honor compels Marines to act responsibly, to fulfill our obligations, and to hold ourselves and others accountable for every action. Then it says, our core values are honor, courage, and commitment. And if you become are to become one of us, they will be the values you live by and fight with as well. That's all nice. But how many know that... Uh, all Marines uh, might show this on the outside, but the problems that Marines and other organizations have is that they can only work with conduct on the outside of a person, right? Sometimes you see somebody that's been trained well in the military, and boy, they stand in the way they salute and all of that and click their heels and all of that, but inside, they might be a scoundrel. How many know that? You look good on the outside, but on the inside, it's suspect, just like the Pharisees. Boy, did they look good on the outside. They had amazing robes and hats. I've been trying to get my wife to allow me to wear robes and hats here, but she threatens my life every time I bring it up. I was looking at scepters online on Amazon. They have them, but she won't let me have one, not even for Father's Day. So... There are organizations that have a code of conduct if you want to be a part of their organization. But I want to talk about living worthy of the call that got placed on your life and my life. And that's a separate issue. There were two verses that I was looking at in 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to read them to you and then we're going to talk about it because... One of the issues I think that uh, Christianity has such uh, a, a lot of people are su suspect of it is because the people who call themselves Christians don't live as Christians. How many know what I'm talking about? Not that we're perfect or that we don't make mistakes, but 
It's one thing to make a mistake and another thing to live totally contrary to what you say with your mouth. Because the Bible tells us to live differently. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 is what we're going to take a look at. This is how it reads. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling. So the title of this message is Living Worthy of His Call. How many here want to live worthy of the call of God on your life? Did you know that if you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it was because you received a high calling from God himself. There's a call of God on your life. You need to be uh, uh, aware of that. You need to be uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that God called you, and it was a high call. What did he call you for? He called you to be the person that he created you to be and to do the things that he created you to do. We were made by God for God. And the way God made us originally, or made man originally, Adam and Eve, he made them perfect. But we know what happened. We're all suffering from what happened, the fall, sinful nature that we have. And when God calls us, he calls us to come back into how he created us originally to be. And he also has things that he's ordained and designed for us to do. God calls us to be followers of Christ and to participate in the work of his redemption. Yesterday we were in Baker Park. We were cooperating with another ministry. And it was so wonderful to see the presence of God outdoors in that park. And at the end there was a young man just starting out in ministry who was a preacher's son who got away from God and from his father and got into drugs and alcohol and everything else and was out there for a while, but God saved him and brought him back. And he was just telling the story. And at the end, people came up to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. We are called to share the redemption story. We have received the high calling. How many say amen? Amen. Now, we received the calling, but we were not worthy of that call. You and I were not worthy of that call. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You and I were not worthy of that call. And we have an issue because the Bible tells us to live worthy of the call. So how do we do that? Well, God makes us worthy of the call. 2 Thessalonians 1, the first part of verse 11 that we read. It says, to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling. How many know who you were before Christ? Raise your hand. How many it was that you were that? You're not that person any longer. And you know what he does? I, I feel this way with my life. I think... My son Joey was alluding to it. He calls the things that are not to confound the things that are. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 26, look what it says. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. So we take credit for nothing except that we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of life and he makes us worthy. Amen? Amen. So now because of that, it's up to you and me to live worthy of the call. 
You received a call. That call was a high calling. You and I were not worthy of the call. God makes you worthy of the call. And now we have to live worthy of the call. Amen? So how do you do that? The verses that we read tell us how to do that. First of all, you live a life worthy of the call by spreading the goodness of God everywhere. The first verse says to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good. The New International Version puts it this way, he may, that he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness. <clears throat> we are called to spread the goodness of God. First of all, to spread the goodness of God, you got to believe in the goodness of God. Amen? You can't spread the goodness of God unless you believe in the goodness of God. I know a lot of people start to doubt when things go wrong or go sideways. You start to doubt. In Psalm 27, if you read the whole psalm, You'll read about the psalmist, I believe it was David, and he's saying, Lord, don't turn your face away from me. Lord, don't, don't, don't not answer me when I call. But in verse 13, he said, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the other version, it says, I will be confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. No matter how things look in your life, no matter what happens in your life, you have to know and believe that the goodness of God is going to bring you through. You know, it should be to us like, uh, I don't know how many of you, you have a favorite movie, maybe it was a, a, a an action movie, and you saw it more than once. How many have seen a, a particular movie more than one time? Isn't it true that when you watch it, you know what's going to happen? You know that your favorite character is not going to die. Yet when you're watching it, you get anxious about it. And you're standing, you're biting your fingers. You saw the thing 20 times. And you feel the, all the emotion of the movie, even though you know. And you know what? For us as believers, knowing the goodness of God, no matter what you're going through now, we should know the end of the story. That because God is good, he's not going to leave us that way. He's going to be with us. He's going to give us his strength. He's going to deliver us. He's going to do whatever it is that he needs to do to bring glory to his name. How many say amen? amen? And he does it all different kinds of ways. You never know how God is going to move, but you do know that he's going to be good. Amen? So you have to believe in the goodness of God. You're called to believe in the goodness of God. You're called to live in the goodness of God. Stop seeing the glass as half empty. We sing that song, you know, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. How many here can declare and testify, raise your hand, if you have lived in the goodness of God? Give God glory. Amen, yes. <clears throat> Our problem is not that we have not lived in the goodness of God, it's that we forget about it. And we have fits and starts with living in the goodness of God when things happen. Here's one way to live in the goodness of God. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Hello. So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Living in the goodness of God is actually 
being unstoppable. Not in your own strength, in the strength of God. In other words, not stopping, not failing, not quitting when things go wrong. Not, not uh, uh, forgetting who God is. Living in the goodness of God is doing everything thanking God. Let me tell you, when you do that, I, I learned that because, you know, we're all hard-headed. I, I was especially knuckle-headed. It took me a while to get it. But I found that if I, if I believe in the goodness of God, which I do, and if I concentrate on the goodness of God, which I do now, when something comes my way, and by the way, there's also always something that comes your way. I can prove it to you. How many are going through something right now? Raise your hand. Look around. So when something comes, then you know what I do now? I praise God. I thank him. Why? Thank him for the trouble. No, I thank him for the deliverance from the trouble, what he's going to teach me through the trouble, that my faith is going to grow because of the trouble, and that he's not going to leave me or forsake me. You know, I was thanking God today uh, for... Today is Father's Day, obviously, and my dad passed away in 2021, April. And uh, when I think of Father's Day, I don't get sad because I know where he is. He was a good father. But I was thinking today of my heavenly father. He, my dad was a good dad. He lived to 93 years old. But uh, he's not here anymore. He left me. He went ahead of me. <laughs> but... God will never, ever leave. And I was thinking about this. You know, when you get older, sometimes you can't be that father that you were before, right? After a while, somebody has to take care of you. I keep telling my children, I'm nice to you only because you're going to be having to take care of me if I live that long. <laughs> you better know how to change diapers. <laughs> 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 right, we, we, we are earthly fathers, we, we can only go so far. But God, our heavenly father, guess what? He's the same God, the same God that we were singing about that worked in Moses' life, in the life of Abraham, in the life of David, who did miracle upon miracle. Not only back then, he does them now. If you haven't experienced God's miracles, it's because you haven't asked. He hasn't stopped. Amen? Amen? Live in the goodness of God and finally display the goodness of God. And you know how you display the goodness of God? By loving and caring for others. Colossians 3, 12 to 14. How about if we all live this? How about if we just concentrated on this? Right? We, we want sometimes people want theology. Let me give you the theology that we need to live. Here it is. Therefore, as God's chosen people, Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Stop trying to figure out when Jesus is coming back. You're not going to figure it out. People wrote books about it when they're coming back. You know what? Bank on the fact that whatever date they say is when he's not coming back. That's just the truth. You're looking for deep truth. Let me give you some deep truth. Be like Jesus. Show some compassion. Show some kindness. Show the goodness of the Lord. Display that. How about that? How about this, which a lot of Christians fail at? Forgive somebody. Forgive somebody. You know, that's so hard for us. But if you would think about it, the way that God thinks about it, after all that he forgave me and you, and we're going to hold something against somebody else, I don't have the temerity to do that anymore. And guess what? When you don't forgive, you imprison yourself. Because God made you like him. You were created in his image. You don't have the gene of unforgiveness. You can't handle it. It will make you sick. 
Just do some studies on it. Go, go Google something, will you? Your nerves, anxiety, your physical body. You get cancer at a higher rate. Check it out. It's the truth. Why? Because our bodies break down. We were meant to be forgivers because God is the first forgiver. I'm so thankful about it because he forgave me a lot. So you want a deep class on theology? How about this? Start with this and master this. Forgive one another and bear with one another. Amen? Live worthy of God's calling by spreading the goodness of God everywhere. Amen? You also live a life worthy of his call by accomplishing the good works that the Lord Jesus has ordained for you to do in power. The third part of verse 1 says, and every work of faith by his power. So it reads, to this end we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. How many know that God has prepared works for you to do? You know what they're called? They're called divine appointments. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for what? To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When he saves you, it's not just so that you can be saved and sit there. He has prepared works for you to do. There's a story for you to tell. Your redemption story that belongs simply to you. Nobody else has it. It's your story. And we're supposed to spread it. We're supposed to help somebody else. We're supposed to be alert every time we're outside, every time we go out of the house. Be alert for the promptings of your faith, what God brings your way. Those promptings are from the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 16 to 17 says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Yesterday, a group of believers from this church were out in Baker Park, and they were handing out those flyers for our event on July 4th. But guess what? It's not just handing out a flyer. It opens up an opportunity to spread the love of Jesus to somebody. You know, every time I look around and realize that most people that I come across don't know Jesus. And if that doesn't alarm you, then we've fallen asleep, haven't we? Because it's a sad state of affairs where someone will die without ever having known Jesus. Their eternity is at stake. We should be on high alert. How many say amen? amen? So God has prepared works for you to do. We need to be alert for what they are when they come our way, and we need to do them in the power of the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Well, you be prepared. How do you get prepared? First of all, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. When we were going out in the park, you think I just go out in the park? No, God help me. Give me the strength and the courage that I need. Give me words. Give me those divine appointments. Pray. You know, my wife, um, she prays about everything, about everything. Even, you know, if someone uh, invites us to go, you know, a vacation or something, and, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, that sounds good. She goes, did you pray? But it's about everything, about everything. And you know, she's right. When I tell her, I'm going to blow my nose, did you pray? <laughs> well, well, no, but maybe I should, and maybe I won't have to. <laughs> Listen, in power, Ephesians 3.20. Now, all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power, at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Why is that important? Well, you can go out and do stuff by yourself. You, you can get some stuff accomplished. But I, I'm interested in the infinitely more. 
You see, because God's divine touch on something changes everything. From a trickle or from a little something to all glory coming down. How many know what I'm talking about? We were designed to accomplish good works. If we want to live life worthy of his call, then we have to accomplish good works that the Lord Jesus has ordained for us to do in power. Amen? You also live a life worthy of his call by reflecting God's glory. The first part of verse 12 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 says, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. What exactly does that mean? That the name of Jesus may be glorified in you. 2 Corinthians 3.18 leads us in the right direction to find out. It says all of us, with no covering on our faces, show the shining greatness of the Lord as in a mirror. All the time we are being changed to look like him with more and more of his shining greatness. This change is from the Lord who is the Spirit. So how does that happen? How, how do you reflect the glory of God? How are you glorified? Or how is his, he's glorified in you? How do you reflect the glory of Jesus? You know, I was looking at and thinking about something. And I was thinking about the moon. Uh, there's been many nights, especially when it's a full moon, and it's bright and it's big. It just, I just, wow. Ever, ever look at the moon and just, you know, and you try to take pictures of it, and the pictures never do it any justice. So I want, put up that first image of the moon, if you will. That's the moon. It's ugly. <laughs> the moon is ugly. But it has one ability. It has the ability to reflect the glory of the sun. And when it does, this is what it looks like. Show that next picture. That's what we see. Not that ugly piece of rock with holes in it, but something that looks glorious. So the moon that has no glory of its own reflects the glory of the sun and begins to look beautiful <laughs> in the same way. We who are worthy, we who are not anything to look at, we would cower if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus. When the glory of the sun reflects off of us because we've allowed him to take control of our lives, then we begin to look like something else. We begin to reflect the glory of the sun. That's who we were created to be. We have the ability, because he created us in his image, to reflect the glory of God. How many of us are doing that? How many of us are doing that? But guess what happens? Timmy, if you'd come, when you reflect the glory of Jesus, people are drawn to him. The wonderful plan of Jesus was this. And he said it this way. He said, unless a kernel of wheat is buried in the ground and dies, there's no life. But when a kernel of wheat grows in the ground, you know how plants grow? The seed dies. And when the seed dies, what happens? Life comes. And out of few seeds, many plants grow. And in the same way, when we die to ourself and allow Christ's life to be in us, then life comes from us. And that life is spread to everybody else. In other words, people, when they see life, did you know that people are hungry for true life? And the only people that have true life are those that have been born again, who have the life of the, of the Son of God in them. People are looking for something 
real. They're, they're given fake and phony and craziness and insane things all day long. It's sickening now. But when truth comes out, and who does it come out through? You and me. Jesus died. He was one life. He limited himself to a human body, which means he could only be in Israel and he could only be in one town and in one place in that town at any time. If he wanted to travel someplace else, he had to walk there. Sometimes he would walk a couple of days. Sometimes he would walk a week. And it would take him time to get from one place to another. He was God, but he limited himself by taking on flesh. But he knew that once he died and rose again and through his Holy Spirit fills us that we would be walking like him on the earth. And now it's not only one Jesus, but the plan was for hundreds, thousands, millions of Jesus is walking on the earth because Christ is alive in us. Did you know that's what the plan was? Did you know that the only Jesus people are going to see is through his people? You might be the only Jesus someone will ever meet. Christ alive in you. It's not a joke. It's not a myth. It's not a little story. Christ comes to live in you and take over if you will let him. And you will become like him. And you will reflect his glory. And you will attract people to the Son of God. That was his plan. And you, he uses very unlikely people. Very unlikely people. I'm one of them. So you live a life worthy of a call by reflecting his glory. And finally, I'll close with this. You live a life worthy of his call by being glorified in him. The Bible says, well, let me read it to you, verse 12 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So that name of our Lord Jesus, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified you and you in him, according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That he may be glorified in you, that's you reflecting his glory, and you glorified in him. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're glorified in Jesus when he is the source of your glory. In other words, what you are looking, you know what? Let me describe it to you this way. You know what fills my heart with great excitement? Is when I see the people of God glorifying Jesus. Because in glorifying Jesus, I'm glorified in him. In other words, he's my glory. I get glory from seeing him glorified. What does that mean? I, I, I get excited. I boast about it. Jeremiah 9, 24 says this, but let the one who boasts, boasts about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercise kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. He is the one that I boast about. He is the one that I talk about. He is the one that I proclaim. He is the one that I live for. He is the one why I'm alive today and being able to speak about him. I could have not been here many times over for a lot of things that happened in my life. I can, how many are like me? God has spared you. Well, he spared us for a reason. Amen. We have a story to tell. He's the source of your glory. It's who, it's he, he is who you boast about. Most people boast about themselves. We boast about Jesus. How many say amen? He is our glory and our crown. Our crown. You are glorified in Christ Jesus when you do that. And you're glorified in Jesus when here's something that we all need to live. When you are, when who you are in Jesus is who you are at all times. There's not two of you. 
There's not Brian in church and Brian at home or Mark at church and Mark at work or Pastor Joey behind the pulpit. You should see Pastor Joey at home. I should be the same person. You ever see, uh, I see it all the time. I grew up seeing it. Excuse me. Something happens when sometimes when people step behind this pulpit. Sometimes people change. How many know what I'm talking about? Being in ministry and in church all my life, I would see that. Be talking to somebody. They're all normal. I've seen it a lot of times. They're all normal. Then you put them up here, something happens. They become somebody else. They become all of a sudden super holy. How many know what I'm talking about? They talk on their toes. Uh, they, 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 they walk as if they are somebody. Let me tell you, I preach with the fear of God in my heart knowing that I'm not worthy to carry his word, but he has made me worthy. And that the only thing that I can offer you is what he gives me in power to give you. It's his word. It's not my word. And because of that, I fear the word of God. I want you to know it. I can only tell you the truth because it's the truth that sets you free. I don't have truth for you to tell. I have Jesus' truth for you to tell. That's what he called me to do. So I have to be, how sad would it be if, uh, you know, my son, was like my son Matt, was saying some very nice things about me that I don't deserve. But what if, what if he couldn't say anything? What if the person that he has seen speaking up here, he knew different because he's seen me at home? And he could sneak up on me. He has keys to our house. What if, what would happen to his faith? What if there were cameras everywhere where you could be followed all the time to see how you react? Oh, how about one in your car? Some of you are okay as so you get behind that wheel, right? And something else comes out. I've been with some saintly brothers in Christ, you know, and I never drove with them before, and they offered me a ride, and I'm, oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> Is my ministry, that what would it produce this? <laughs> but we should be the same person in church as behind the wheel. How many say amen? It's hard for me. I'm from New York. So, you know, I, I just take pride in being able to cut people off. Because in New York, if you want to get to the next lane, don't signal because they'll never let you in. You got to sneak in. And then if you could do it to a cab, a yellow cab, whew, you got it. But you know what? Now people cut me off. People get in front of me. They cut down the fast lane. And you know what? Praise God. Here, go. Jesus, watch. I, I pray that sometimes you see a Christian sticker in the back and I say, oh, God, help him. <laughs> Listen to 2 Corinthians 5.17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become, that is becoming, has become a new person. The old life is gone. 
the new life, the new you, that's who you are at all times. That's how you are glorified in Christ Jesus, by being who he created you to be. For I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave his life for me. That's Galatians 2.20. And that scripture is for all of us. I want to live after all Jesus has done for me. Because, to be honest with you, I don't have a stellar record. Do you? I spent years messing up while knowing him. While knowing the love of Jesus, I still messed up. And I had to learn you see, that it's not about my goodness. It's not about how great I can live, but that I'm as weak as anybody else. Sometimes I see somebody out in the street with a sign, and you know what? That's me without Jesus Christ. I might as well hold up a sign. I am homeless. I have no home but the one that God gives me. I need a job. I don't have anything without Christ Jesus. But see, I, I am not worthy of the call. But he made me worthy of the call. So now I want to live worthy of the call. And I can't do it by myself. Do you, do you understand that? But he didn't tell me to live by myself and do it. He said that if I will let him live in me, then he will make me worthy of the call. I will live worthy of the call. My life has been changed and only he gets the glory because I know who I am. I know who I am without Christ. But I certainly know who I am in Christ. I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength. I am a new creation. That old person is finally gone. Let that old person go. Let him go. Let her go. Let them go. Live in the life that Jesus Christ died to give you. Live worthy of the call, the high call of God in your life. Let's take territory for God. Let's stop playing around. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. At every turn, wherever we look, whatever we do, God, if we're honest, we have to give you all the glory because it all goes to you. It goes to you because you're God, but also goes to you, Father, we have nothing to show you but what you've done for us. The mercy that you showed us. The grace, oh Lord God. And Father, you know, God, that we have an issue Lord God, we're trying to do good by ourselves. And that you told us, oh Lord God, that you would help us, that you would do it for us, that you would allow us to reflect your glory if we let you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that we will allow you to do that, God, for the rest of our lives. I also pray, Father, for anybody who has not or is not following you today. Lord, soften hearts today in Jesus' name with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to know if there's anybody here in order to live a life worthy of the call, you have to answer the call. God calls everyone. With the most famous passage of scripture is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life 
if you want to start living a life worthy of that call, answer the call today. If God is speaking to your heart, raise your hand. If God is calling you, I want to pray for you and with you in the name of Jesus. Anybody here who needs to answer that call, if you're online and you're watching, God is speaking to you as well. I want you to lift your hand where you are. God will see it, and we're going to pray together. Anybody here who needs to answer the call, I want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Anybody here needs to make that decision? Amen. If I see your hand, yeah, that's to my right. Thank you. Thank you. You may put it down. Anybody else before we pray? This is so important. It's so important. Eternity is at stake. If you're online and you raise your hand, I'm going to pray a prayer. You here as well. I want you to repeat it after me, and God will hear it. Say this, dear Lord Jesus, Lord, I hear you today, and I want to answer the call. The word says that I need to believe. I believe that you are who you said that you are, that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross, and I believe that you rose again. Today, I'm also acknowledging that I'm a sinner. I've done many things wrong, and I'm sorry. I, I, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me and to cleanse me with the blood that you spilled on the cross. Today, I'm answering the call. I give you my life. I give you my heart in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for those, God, who have answered the call right now. And Lord, according to your word, they have just gone from darkness into the light. They are now children of the Most High God. My prayer is that you would keep them, Lord God, that that seed will find good ground. Father, that they would have now an understanding because light has entered them, Lord Jesus. And God, that you would teach them and show them according to your word how to live now according to that high call that just received and answered, oh God. Father, we thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. With our heads still bowed and eyes closed. Maybe someone here is like me, struggling as a Christian. Not that you don't want to, live worthy of the call, but you're struggling. There's a lot of reasons why we struggle. I know all about them. And today you want God to help you because he will. We don't get help because we don't ask. I forgot to ask. But thankfully he heard me when I cried out. If there's someone here, you want help in living worthy of the call, he will do it. Raise your hand. I'd like to pray for you. Yes, there are hands all over the building. Yes, I see your hands. Put them down. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. God is so good to confess, Lord Jesus, that we need help. Father, you don't mind that at all. In fact, you told us to ask for help. You told us not to try to do it alone. You told us how impossible it would be. It's always, oh God, that you are glorified in us and us in you. It's always you, Lord, always you. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, oh God. Father, that you would empower them like never, ever before. God, that they would begin to live lives worthy of the call that you've placed on them, oh God, that you would begin to use them like you've never used them before, God, giving them divine appointments, oh God, making them, oh God, shining examples of your glory and your goodness, Lord Jesus. So that, Lord, when we see you, we will not be ashamed. But, Lord, we will hear those words that we all want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Father, I thank you for speaking to our hearts today. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. And can we give the Lord an offering of thanks?